This is a joint work in the area of technology-enhanced learning, uh, which is done with one of my postdoctoral research fellows, Konstantin Bauman, who is working in my department. And the motivation is technology-enhanced learning sort of has been growing in its importance over the past few years. This is an proclamation made by IBM that this particular set of technologies which they call classroom that learn you uh, is is they consider it as one of the big technological innovations uh, over the next few years you may agree or disagree with this statement by IBM but clearly this is something which is something very exciting and interesting in going in this area uh, in my case, sort of in this particular project, uh, the big picture is this. Uh, nowadays, we manage to accumulate a lot of information about the students, especially in the online settings. Uh, we know information about their performance on the quizzes, exams, on the assignments, uh, conversations which they have on discussion forums, and much more. And the big question is, can we leverage all these digital footprints which students leave online and leverage this knowledge to, pro to provide active, proactive academic advice to them? So it's a, basically the context and, of this project in which I, um, uh, the, 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 the big picture. There are two types of academic advice. One is proactive, uh, where, which is knowledge enhancing, when you try to expand and broaden the student's knowledge. And the second type of advice is the remedial one, when you identify gaps in your knowledge and then you try to fill in these gaps by providing appropriate recommendations to them with the purpose of sort of filling these gaps in their knowledge. Uh, in this particular project, you can provide various types of academic advice, but we decided to focus on uh, providing personalized reading materials to the students. So within the context of the remedial advice. So you identify gaps in their knowledge, and then you try to fill these gaps with one particular device when you recommend them something to read as opposed to various other um, types of advice which you can do. Uh, in the industry, various you know, companies, they sort of been looking at this issue. In particular, Khan Academy, they do recommendations, but where they focus on, they focus more on knowledge enhancing type of recommendations uh, when they provide the next learning activity to the students. Uh, also, they do a lot of like manual work in the sense they like bring you know humans in the loop in terms of organizing various types of materials. Uh, whereas we try to to do it like more automated approach. Uh, Coursera also provides recommendations, but of the courses to the students, not within the course particular reading materials. Uh, finally, Newton also focuses on recommending the next learning activity to the students, somewhat similar to Khan Academy. Uh, in academia, people look at uh, uh, recommendations of various learning materials to the students. There is even like the whole book written on this topic a couple of years, few years ago. Uh, uh, in there has also been work on uh, providing advice for the next learning activity. This couple of authors looked at that. Uh, in case of gap filling idea uh, uh, in case of filling the gap approach these authors uh, basically uh, proposed some conceptual frameworks and ideas without going into the algorithms and building actual systems 
Uh, and these authors, they basically did build the system, but the focus was like on the essays, more on natural language processing. Uh, in, our, uh, appro uh, in our project, uh, uh, we basically, I'm going to talk about, you know, the algorithms and the, the system which we sort of developed uh, for recommending remedial learning materials. And we also tested our system uh, on live experiments. So basically, we did A-B test uh, on live students by recommending them specific learning materials in case of actual learning processes of some subject matter. Uh, I've been working together with one online university. Actually, the founder of this university is here in Israel. And in case of that particular university, we have a lot of access to the student information, uh, inclu including uh, uh, the set of syllabi which they use in the courses, uh, list of various uh, required reading materials, discussion forums, quizzes, assignments with grades, and like quite a bit of information about online learning activities uh, of the students. Uh, and the problem is this, what we want to do, we want to, by observing the students, all these online learning activities, uh, you want to identify where the students, while the students are learning the subject, where the gaps are, and then you recommend what the students should read to fill these gaps. Uh, our method, uh, which we proposed, consists of seven steps. In the first step, uh, we build a taxonomy of topics in each course. Then, once the topics, taxonomy of topics are built, uh, we develop the library of remedial learning materials course by course. Uh, then, uh, for each item in the library, we identify the list of corresponding course topics, and then sort of, I'll go through these seven steps, and at the end, we provide the, uh, the active advice to the students. Uh, so let's, let me go through each of these steps individually. First, uh, you st we start with uh, uh, building the taxonomy of topics, and we learn this the taxonomy from the syllabus of the course. Uh, in our particular case, this wasn't a difficult task, because for this particular university, the syllabi are very well structured, so we used fairly straightforward text mining methods to identify the topics of the course and subtopics and build up the whole uh, topic structure for each and every course in uh, this particular setting. Uh, the second thing is uh, we, what we do, uh, we want to build all the relevant reading materials associated with this course, which go way beyond what the required materials are as they are specified in the syllabus. And these reading materials include textbooks, scientific papers, online articles, web pages, etc., etc. And we do it uh, in the following way. Uh, uh, we extract first for each topic, we we'll learn the key concepts associated with the topic, uh, which we get from the assigned reading materials for the course. Uh, and then for each uh, key concept, which we extracted uh, in this way, we'll launch a bunch of queries and extract top N related documents for this query and then we eliminate irrelevant and uh, unreputable materials, obviously, for obvious reasons. And again, relevant one is the one uh, uh, which has at least one of these key concepts in it. After we build this library uh, of related materials for, the, for each course, uh, we uh, I build this item-topic relation 
uh, uh, we basically identify the for each topic we identify those materials in the library which is the, which is the closely most closely related to this topic in the interest of time i'm skipping various technical pieces here but as an example let's say for the ancient greece and rome topic we identify not only this particular book but through various mechanisms we extract the most relevant pieces in this book let's say chapter two and three uh, the next step, uh, we, we build this quiz topic relationship, so for each topic we identify the most relevant questions on the quiz, and the quiz consists of multiple choice questions by using like relatively simple TF-IDF measures to identify the closest relations. Let's say for the Flanders we found that question number one and question number two uh, really Quiz questions number one and quiz question number two is really the closely, the most closely related to the topic of Flanders in the art history course. Uh, the next thing what we do, we build a performance profile for each student uh, and course offering. So what you do, we basically identify uh, on the quizzes, uh, which questions were answered correctly and correctly, and based on this, we compute uh, the, the how well the student did uh, in each of the topics in the course. Let's say for the Flanders, the score is 0.33, for Florence, etc., etc. Et et uh, and and then, sort of, this is an important thing. We identify based on this. We identify. Uh, on which topics in the course the student perform poorly and where the gaps are in particular course which the student is taking and it can be either low performance score as i just described or if you look at the subtopics you it's a, if you have the sufficient number of subtopics for a particular topic where the student performed poorly that can also be an indication that the student has a gap in the subject. And finally, what you do, we identify, you know, these gaps of the topics where the student uh, performed poorly, and then we go to this library and identifying which reading materials can fill these gaps as described in the previous step and step number two. That's what we recommend to the student. So if we look at this example, uh, for example, uh, in case of the art history course, uh, assume we identified that the gaps are really in, in Flanders, in uh, Rococo, and in end of Renaissance topics, then, and then because we have this focused uh, materials which can fill these gaps, that's what we recommend to the student. Uh, so that's the algorithm. We tested it on these online university settings. In our case, we, had a, we worked with 42 different courses, uh, ranging from computer science to business to general studies courses. We tracked students' performance over three semesters each semester in this particular university consisted of nine weeks, uh, 910 students, they come from all over the world. Because it was done over three semesters, we had like uh, 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 1,514 uh, enrolled enrollments, basically student course pair. Uh, and what we want to do, we want to show that the algorithm which I just presented works. And works in the sense that the students to whom we provided these recommendations, they outperformed students to whom those recommendations were not provided. So we did, as I said, we did this A-B test. We recommended to live students who was taking the classes specific recommendations according to our algorithm, and we split students in three groups. First is a control group. We don't provide any recommendations to them. They just continue their studies as, uh, as usual. 
The second group, we provided non-personalized recommendations. We basically they recommend the same thing to the whole group, regardless of their performance. And the third group is to whom we provided personalized recommendations using our algorithm, which I, which I just described. Described, And then we compare performance of these three groups. Uh, what specifically we do, uh, uh, we have in this particular university, we had two quizzes. First quiz was done after week number three, second after the sixth week, and the final exam is at week nine, and we provided these recommendations three times, each time before the quiz in the final exam. So this is an example of the recommendations come in the form of email. So this is the template of the email. This is sort of standard type of email which we generate automatically. What is non-standard here, personalized, is for each course we identify the gaps. In this particular ca case of this particular student, Joe, uh, we identify that this person has problems with this topic and with this topic and then according to our algorithm we give the student the suggestions you know to read this book but not the whole book but these two particular chapters which were sort of targeted <coughs> in a targeted manner pulled out of the book as I did described and in this case we recommend these three web pages from this website not just go to the website and browse it out, but really look at these three specific items on this web page. Uh, what we also have done at the end, we just, as according to the standard experimental design, we sent uh, the survey, how much they liked, what with this whole thing, and uh, in order to identify problems and so get students' feedback, in, I don't have much time, I won't go into the whole survey thing, just I'll show one slide. We ask students various types of questions, like 20 or 30 different questions in the survey. These are sort of the most relevant one. Recommended materials were relevant for the course, recommended materials were helpful in your studies. So basically we try to understand how well students understood uh, liked uh, our recommendations and basically this graph shows that uh, majority of them really liked or strongly liked these recommendations which we were provided which we have provided to them but it's not only a matter of how much our recommendations were liked by the students but also how effective they were in terms of their educational process and so what we do, we measured their performance on the final exam. So to measure the effectiveness, we saw how well the student did on their final exam. Those who received our recommendations versus those who didn't receive any recommendations at all versus the control group. Uh, in case of personalized recommendations, we basically looked specifically on the people who visited at least one recommended materials because you can simply ignore them and therefore there's nothing to look at. We only limited it to the, those students which looked at our recommendations. And we compared all the three groups in terms of absolute and normalized performance, like their absolute score versus normalized score uh, versus uh, how well they did in the current course versus the previous courses. We also divided students into the three groups. The good students uh, whose average GPA was between 70 and 90, excellent students whose average GPA is above 90, and poor students, uh, bad students whose GPA is below 70. Uh, so this is sort of the results. This is the histogram 
which shows the distribution of the students as expected. Most of the students fall into this category of good students uh, with GPA between 70 and 90. Uh, this graph uh, shows that our method uh, really for the whole population, for these three groups, uh, uh, personalized recommendations outperformed non-personalized and controlled group for the good students. For excellent students and for poor students, sort of the results were mixed, but I'll talk about it shortly. Uh, here, uh, we really, in this particular case, we focused uh, only not on the uh, the whole population of the students who received personalized recommendations, but those who opened them, who looked at at least something which we recommended to them. And because not everybody looked at your recommendations, many students ignored them, so this number is only 76 uh, for personalized, non-personalized were 89 students, and uh, for control group, we had 206 because we just looked at the whole group, not only those who opened our recommendations. And this graph shows that those students who received our personalized recommendations, the average performance uh, in absolute terms, they received on average 83.2 uh, mark on their final exam. Where this, whereas the control group to received 79.39 and the differences were statistically significant. The interesting thing, thing that non-personalized recommendations had practically no effect. So there was only slight, like, there were no statistically significant differences between this and this group. Actually, in terms of the statistical significance, the difference between personalized and control group were statistically significant, where between these two groups were not. Clearly, this is bigger than this, but also since we had like relatively few examples, uh, so the results in this particular case between these two groups were not statistically significant. We did the same thing in terms of normalized uh, scores, and again, so the main takeaway from here is that our person, pe personalized group outperformed controlled group and did better than uh, also non-personalized group. We also did a comparison with your performance on the previous, in the in terms of, you know, previous courses where you didn't receive recommendations. Let's say I'm taking a course on databases and I'm receiving recommendations and I want to compare my personal performance in database course where I'm receiving recommendations versus all, um, um, uh, versus the last course where I didn't receive any recommendations. And we do it across all the previous subjects in the absolute terms. And here you can see that in, if, you re if I receive personalized recommendations, my average score, absolute score improved by 5.83. So instead of, uh, uh, the, in absolute terms, the improvement was close to six. Uh, whereas for control group, uh, actually, here is like even slightly negative, but practically around zero. So here, basically, for control group, there is no performance improvement on my current course versus the previous, the last course. And here, when I received personalized recommendations, I do see significant performance improvements. Uh, and uh, and for non-personalized, there are also practically no improvements. And we also do it uh, in terms of, the previous slide was in terms of normalized, here in terms of, uh, sorry, absolute terms, here in terms of normalized scores. So again, we see improvement. Uh, 
Here, what we do, we do the same thing, but within the same subject. So my current course is, let's say, computer science course. I want to compare my performance improvement in computer science course versus the previous course, which is also computer science course, where I did not receive any recommendations, and as opposed to any other course. So here we sort of compare it within the same category of your subject matter. And again, you see sort of performance improvements. But here it is like 7.32. And again, the differences are statistically significant. Uh, and yeah, he, here, uh, yeah, I jumped a few slides. Uh, here, uh, basically, we did quite a few of comparisons in the interest of time. I have only a couple of minutes left. Uh, uh, we did this comparison. What I described was for the good students whose GPA, average GPA is between 70 and 90. We try to do the same thing for uh, excellent students whose GPA is above 90, for poorly performing students. And uh, we did comparison not only for the last course you have taken, but for two previous courses. For all the previous courses, we did quite a few comparisons. In many cases, like in the previous example, the performance improvements were statistically significant. Not always. In some cases, they were not statistically significant. But it was for the good students. We also did similar comparison for the in this case with the bad students, but unfortunately we cannot report any significant results because we're, we ho in our case we only had three bad students who really clicked on the uh, recommended materials which were recommended for you, so we cannot make any significant statements because we had only very few poorly performing students. Uh, the, the interesting thing with excellent students our recommendations were not only useful, they were really bad for them, as you can see here. But we cannot make any claims here because the numbers were too small, 13 students. We cannot make any statistically significant conclusions. Uh, but the intuition here, if you're doing fine, you have an excellent student, these recommendations uh, if it ain't, don't try to fix it if it ain't broken, sort of this type of idea. It's a little bit more here, there's a bit more caveats, but fundamentally we cannot make any statistically significant conclusions because of the small sample size. Uh, so to conclude my presentation, uh, we proposed uh, an approach to recommending uh, reading materials, personalized reading materials to the students to fill in the knowledge gap in their courses which they are sort of studying where identify the sort of holes in uh, the way they learn the subject. And what is important, the whole thing was completely automated. There is no human in the loop here anywhere. Sort of we just completely automated this whole process. We worked with 42 uh, courses, but since our method is linear, we, we could have applied to 442 or like any other number. So, this, so the whole idea, we tried to make this approach scalable, that it wouldn't work for this particular online university, but let's say to my university, NYU is a gigantic uh, institution with hundreds of like, thousands of courses offered. Uh, and then we empirically showed that uh, students not only found our recommendations useful as, te uh, as based on the survey which we conducted, but also that they were effective in terms of those students who received our recommendations, they did better on the final exam vis-a-vis -vis those group of students who didn't receive personalized recommendations. The improvements were not major, but still that can make a difference between, let's say, the grade of B and B plus, or B plus and A minus, just a few uh, percentage points. And the results were, 
not always, but in many cases, statistically significant. And finally, that these recommendations were most usefully useful for the people in this middle group, the good students. Because for excellent students, first, many of them simply don't need them, and those who even needed them, sort of, it's again, if it don't fix it if it ain't broken kind of approach. But, uh, and the second thing is that for poorly performing students, uh, they were not effective uh, because they probably the student, students needed stronger medicine that our recommendations go and read these, these, these things. But again, since the results were not statistically significant, we cannot make any claims, so this is the, uh, something which we really ne need to look further into this. Uh, my time is up, the machine says. Uh, well, but uh, again, this is, the, this is the initial sort of work we, we focused on providing recommendations of reading materials, but the next phase of our project we want to you know, recommend some quizzes, not quizzes, some additional exercises, you know, with various people to talk to and like enhance the scope of recommendations and uh, also try to improve our algorithm, try to push them, these performance in improvements even further. But again, since in the interest of time, I think I, sh I should stop. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Any questions? So, two questions, one education, one data mining. The education question, it seems like you're mixing two things in your treatment. You are selecting the people who care enough to study and perhaps motivating them to care enough to study and you're giving them the right materials. It seems like that's something that you might be able to separate in your effect because it would be nice to see the comparisons between the people who got the personalized message but didn't follow it to see how much is it about just getting the right people to choose to yeah. study. Yeah. And, and the other piece of this, and you can answer them together, uh, from a data mining perspective, do you imagine that there's a certain quantity of students going through these materials at which you wouldn't have to do all of this data engineering to do the matching, but could learn from previous students' experiences which materials should be recommended to which students based on matching up students with past students who have the same difficulties? Uh, yeah, this, this is a good question. A, let me answer your first question, Joe. Uh, the first question, I think I went a bit quickly. So these graphs, all these graphs from this and further down several graphs, they are related to the students. I recommend something to you, and those, that's what these smaller numbers, those who cared enough to click on it, we don't know even they, how much they said. No, let me take it back. The survey showed, I didn't have this graph, but the in the interest of time, I didn't put, I had several graphs in the survey, but the survey showed that a fair amount of students did spend enough time to study. At least that's what they told us in the survey, we don't know. The only thing we know here that someone clicked on, at least on one of the recommendations, we don't know if they read how much they sort of really followed it. But what this graph shows is, this is for all the students who, uh, not necessarily on those who clicked on our recommendations. So this one is like the entire population. So it was, we divided them, 900 students roughly in three groups, so here is, when we talk about personalized here, we're talking about roughly like 300 students as opposed to 76 students here. So we did look at the entire population. So the non-personalized made no difference if they clicked, but... Uh, non-personalized, I showed to everybody the same stuff, the template. But they still did better on average. Uh, 
this uh, non-personalized, they did better than the control group. Yeah. Correct. But 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 these guys, their performance improved. Uh, but uh, this is one way of doing. So we we need to obviously to dig even more, further into it. Uh, but we did look at the entire population, not just only in those two groups. The second question is: Let me remember if I got it correctly. Uh, so. Uh, what you suggest, you look at the past students, what they've, no, you look at the students, what, how well, when, what kind of difficulties they had in the past, and use this thing to recommend. Uh, yeah, this can, be, this can be another method which we could have used. For personalized, we're really tracking you how you progress through my course, week by week, click by click, and dynamically we identify problems for you in this particular course. Uh, so that's like really personalized. But yes, for, we could also, in addition to this, we can look at the, the past historical performances. In this case, it will not be like personalized in, in the way we got here. Yeah, this is another thing we could have included and compare it with what we have done. Yeah. But yeah, we haven't done it. It's a good suggestion. OK, I'm sorry that we don't have uh, time to more questions right now, but let's uh, thank the speaker again. Mm -hmm.